All right, now that you've learned how to play some open chords and you've learned how to embellish them in a number of different ways, things like that, I wanna introduce you to the next logical thing for us to learn, which is how to use this device here, which is called a capo, okay? A guitar capo. Now, if you think about it, Open chords have a very wonderful and unique sound because some of the strings that you're playing are open, some of the strings are, are being pressed on. You're able to put fingers down, add fingers, you know, you're able to take fingers off and get these sus sounds and all these different things we've been talking about before. Now, there are some other chords that we're going to be learning a little bit further into this course called bar chords, and those are more blocky chords that kind of move up and down the guitar. But they're an entirely different system, okay? The point of the capo is this. Let's say you and I got together and we were writing a song. I'm going to play guitar and you're, um, you're going to sing, right? So I come up with this idea. And again, my idea isn't going to be fancy right now. But let's say I just came up with this thing. I went. And you go, wow, that's really great. I could, I could totally sing something over the top of that. But the key is just weird. Okay, well, number one, I could start trying to play different chords and things like that, but I'm not going to be able to do this kind of thing if I start playing different chords. You know, if I go to E first, it's going to sound different. I want that kind of open chord sound with that sus in there. I want that whole thing. So instead of changing the way I'm playing it, what I do is I use the capo. Now what the capo is for is if you think about it, the guitar starts at the first fret, essentially where the nut is right here. So if I wanted to take this D chord and change the key, I could move this D up somewhere else. As I move it up, the strings that I'm pressing on are going to go up. The strings that I'm not pressing on aren't going anywhere, obviously, right? But the strings that I am pressing on are going to keep changing. So it's important to understand that this D really can move up the guitar, okay? Every time I move it up, though, I have to understand that even though it looks like D, it's no longer sounding like D. It only sounds like D when it's here. If I put it here, it's actually sounding like D sharp or E flat. And now it's sounding like E and F and so on. So, again, that's a whole other conversation, but visually, it looks like D in my brain because I'm a guitar player. But it sounds different as I move up. So if I was to take this capo and I'm going to place it on the first fret, okay, right there, and you'll notice I have it fairly straight up and down and I have it kind of right next to that fret wire there. I'm not on top of it or anything. It's really just acting like a finger is what it's really doing. And now what happens is instead of playing D here like I used to, I'm going to need to play D right here because D still needs a space. So this is acting like the nut, only I've moved it up. So D is here now. And C and G. So I go to you and I go, okay, we'll try this key. And you go, yeah, that's pretty good. It's still not quite there. So I move it up wherever, let's say third fret. So I move it up to third fret. Now I go. And you go, yeah, that's the key. That's the one. Okay. So we found a compromise. I'm now playing in a key that fits your voice but I'm still playing the chords in the chord style that I want to be able to get the sound that I'm looking for. You know, an easy answer would have been somebody would say, well, why didn't you just play different chords? I could have, but then I can't do this specific kind of thing that I wanted for the sound that I'm looking for. Again, I want that open chord sound and specifically, I want that D with that sus. That's what I'm looking for for my song. So that's a great reason why you'd use a capo is that you want to maintain the visualization, and you want to maintain that chord voicing that you're using, but you just need to be able to play it in a different key, which happens all the time. So let's say I moved it way up. Let's say I went all the way up to seventh fret up here, okay? Now, the downside to this is, is obviously as you get further up the guitar, the frets get quite a bit smaller. But the upside is, is you get these really great kind of mandolin sounds. See? So you get some really neat things. It's not just, you know, a mathematical thing. It's that you like the sound of it. 